Well, the budget for 2021, including supplementary budget, is 14.6 trillion naira, out of which total capital expenditure, including for MDAs, is 4.98 trillion naira for the whole year. Drawing from this by August, capital expenditure should have hit 3.3 trillion naira. But according to the breakdown, which the finance minister gave last week, as at August ending, capital expenditure stood at 1.75 trillion naira, an amount which is derived from the country's debt. Actual borrowing, as at that time, which is the end of August, was 4.61 trillion naira. Now, can the infrastructure back by this loan, can it pay back the debts and the loans from which or for which the loans were taken? Well, we'll have that conversation with Professor Ken Ife. He is a development economist joining us from uh, Abuja studio. Good to speak with you, Prof. Good morning. Uh, good morning, and thanks for having me. Good to have you too. Well, it is imperative that a government develops infrastructure, and this justifies the country's borrowing. Uh, but can we put our debts uh, up, up until this time, or let's say August ending, and the capital expenditure? Can we put it side by side and see if they are at par? Well, the, the issues are this. Should we borrow? The question is yes. Why? Because if you needed to invest, which is the case, you have to resort to your savings. We, as a country, we don't have it. So you have no option than to borrow. Of course, you have two options in the borrowing, domestic borrowing or foreign. In our case, we are splitting it 50-50, uh, which is optimal. Um, but there is a law that guides borrowing, which is the FRA, the Fiscal Responsibility Act 2007 which says that you borrow for capital expenditure of human resource development, you borrow on concessionary terms for long term, and then you also need to justify what they call, you know, uh, you, know you have to justify that. And then government tries to do that, and the DMO helps it to, to, to pass it, you know, and then we expect something to come from Fiscal Responsibility Commission. Now, the thing is this, the stock of infrastructure in Nigeria is only 35%. In South Africa, it's about 80%. In many countries, it's over 100%. We are underspending on infrastructure. And we have to build infrastructure. The reason, again, is that if you look at the two visions of Nigeria, long-term visions of Nigeria, 2030, our GDP is expected to grow to 1.64 trillion in 2050, 6.4 trillion. It's inconceivable you will go anywhere near those figures if, you don't, if it's not matched by growth in infrastructure. Infrastructure connects to employment generation. It, con it connects to building a sustainable economy. There are questions on debt sustainability without a doubt, but it is necessary to, to borrow, and you have to borrow for the right reason. The law is very clear, the wrong reasons for borrowing, and then it's very, very severe on what the, the penalties that will go to civil servants and financial institutions if they borrow uh, lend money for different purposes, other than what the law says. Okay, so the, the borrowing, according to the finance ministers, at the end of August stood at 4.61 trillion naira. Meanwhile, uh, capital expenditure was at 1.75 trillion naira. And uh, each time we hear of, uh, you know, borrowing a loan, it is linked to infrastructure. So is there a way to explain the difference between this 4.61 and 1.75? No, the, the, when you look at the infrastructure, the overall infra, because infrastructure spending, uh, capital expenditure spending is spread into so many areas. You have a lot of it on capital and infrastructure, which is really wide where the law says spend the money on. Then you have in other uh, non-borrowed money, which is from government's own budget, uh, capital expenditures in, in normal capital expenditure. And then you have some other capital expenditure in statutory transfers and some other areas. So when you get all of them together, we're actually posting 33% of our budget on capital expenditure, which is among the highest in this administration. So it's, it's good news. Are we, able going, are we going to be able to spend all that is another story. Because the spend is, is dependent on the money coming in, as well as, of course, the loan will, will come in. But there are other revenues that are that are, they are going to depend on. The president said that last year, we expect to do 100% spend on the budgeted capital expenditure. The year before, 
we did well because remember that the Senate allowed the, the second year to, uh, to, to run concurrently for over another three months. So, that, you know, we did, it, we did our best there. So, the, is, is, what other issues are, are we going to look at in relation to that? The fact of the matter is that capital expenditure is the key to, to build confidence. People don't want to invest in your economy if they don't see that you are uh, mm -hmm. building infrastructure, if they don't see that you are rolling out uh, laws that are enabling the environment. So uh, it, it's very key. So um, there's also the issue of can these infrastructures pay you know, for the loan that is being taken. For instance, we see the construction of a railway to link Kano and Kaduna will cost about 1.2 billion naira. We also see the one for Second Niger Bridge, about 36, 336, beg your pardon, billion naira. Can they pay for this money? Um, there are two types of infrastructure. There are the longer term infrastructure that actually require a lot of money but spread over a longer period of time. Rail is a key example on that. When you build rail, it's very expensive. You can't expect to recover the cost of... The rail, the rail bill will be over $15 billion, you know, when you add all of them. But the thing is, it's not, you don't, the permutation should not be based on passenger traffic. The real re return is expected from cargo because Rail is the cheapest and most effective way of transporting heavy goods across long distances all over the world. So you need to give it a little more time for such infrastructure projects that are going to connect to rail to come on stream. For example, the sea line, the sea, the sea, uh, the sea ports. We have plans for so many deep sea ports, Lake deep sea port, One deep sea port. They have uh, Bakasi, um, you have ba uh, the one in Cross River State, a Bakadip seaport. Bayesa is looking for one. Badag is looking for one. Boni is... So they are all huge. When you define a deep sea port, the, how to compare it is that the big ship like Panamax can enter the deep sea port, which is over 13 meters uh, uh, in length, in depth. Compared to Lagos, what you see coming to Lagos and Tinkan and all of that are just small ships that carry 4,000 containers. A big deep sea port with Panama will carry 16, 17,000 containers. So that, if it enters Lekki, you can forget Lagos because it will be dead jam. But so you need rail to move them out. And then you now have to have inland container depots spread across the country inland where you'll be whisking these goods away and the customs can go there and deal with the clearing. Uh, but that's very important for the rail. So you have to wait for these to connect up to the rail lines, uh, to the sea ports, for that profitability to come. And then, of course, we are not exporting that much. If we are doing so, you have backhaul capacity. And that backhaul capacity makes a huge difference because they charge you 50 to 100% more for importing container loads simply because they are going back empty. The same thing with plane. When the plane comes in, the cargo of planes, they go back empty. So when you have backhaul, then you have, you, you have, you have uh, more economy. But of course, you also have to deal with the regulation. Because if you hear the Senate, sorry, the ADB vice president uh, the other day, last week, was saying that a cost to ship 100 metric tons of goods out of this country in Ghana cost $4,000. In Nigeria, it cost $35,000. So we've got to, we want to get over this whole thing because we are just discouraging trade. Uh, so, and then if you look at the trade capacity, import and export is nearly $100 million, a billion, $100 billion. That's the, about the size. Now, but don't forget, that is mainly to do with in, incoming, and there may be oil going out. But when goods begin to go out in the size of the goods coming in, then we're going to be talking about something different. But how do we balance... So the answer to your question is, it can be viable. It can be viable, but it there's takes also time for bigger ones. Yes, but there's also the need to balance. You know, for instance, when you talk about rail, you're talking of a transportation that is supposed to be for the masses. You know, which is supposed to cater. Uh, uh, when you put that side by side with the need for it to be viable, I mean, even now uh, the the costs, the, the travel costs, let's say from Lagos to but I think by rail it is about a thousand or two thousand which cannot, you know, add up to what we are talking about, the cost. So how do we balance that with the need to provide 
uh, a mass transportation for the people? Now, let me give you, the, first of all, the, the, the mass transportation is a key objective because the, rail, the road is becoming very dangerous and there is a lot of attack on the roads. The roads are so bad. Transport that could take just one day of remove goods from Katsina to Lagos or to Podakot is taking three days because of all the bad roads. And the bad roads are such because you don't have the rail in operation. Now, what rail will do for you is not only is the rail going to connect up all the, all the local development centers across the country, it will move, it will actually have a lot of social impact. In fact, why Nigerians have gone to their uh, shell is because of the discontinuities in the rail. Before, in the early 60s, rail was the way we travel around the whole country. But because there have been that dis disconnections, people are just who, you know, withdrawing into their shell. So in answer to your question, yes, it will continue to improve the economy. Remember, we also use it to distribute goods within the country. And that brings down prices. If you want to move one ton of grain from, um, from uh, Katsina or Sokoto to Portacot, it costs you between 75,000 to 100,000 naira a ton to move it. But if you are going to use rail to move it, it won't even cost you up to 10,000 or even maybe about 5,000 because one coach will carry about 30 metric tons and then one head will drive about 30 coaches. So it's about 900 metric tons that just that one rail will carry from, from Kanu down to the, to the south. So the cost will drop significantly. Impact of food in, on inflation will also drop because in, uh, transportation costs about 20% of input costs and then power is almost about 30% of input costs. So they don't forget that you can also transport fuel uh, by rail. You can also transport gas by rail. All of those costs that drive a higher cost of, of uh, power and transport will drop without a doubt. But then the real revenue will come from the movement of the goods because if you look at our sea ports, we move in about, we get about 1 million containers, over 1 million containers come in a, a, a year. Now those 1 million, imagine what is going on in Lagos. It takes you two weeks to get into the seaport and another week to get out of the seaport and it costs you about 2 million naira. So why would you have all that cost? If the rail will simply move about 30 of them in one, you know, about 30 containers out, 30 trailers will come out in one, in one shipment. All go into the inland container depot. People can now go there and clear their goods in Kaduna or in, um, in Bado or anywhere else in Jos. So they don't have to get into Lagos. Absolutely no reason to go into the Lagos seaport. Then the customs are there in all the bonded warehouses, in all the ICDs. They go there and clear their goods. And some of these ICDs, in, in, inland container terminals, are part of original destination, which means you can actually ship your products from there and receive your products from there. You don't have to go to Lagos, the seaport. So uh, these things are workable. We just need to, you know, work more at it. I, I believe that's what you're saying. As the infrastructure, but there are others because the bridge, Niger Bridge, I mean, and even Lagos Ibado Expressway. I was just looking at some figures. We could easily have 5,000 cars go through there. And if you are charging only 1,000 1, naira, in a year it's over 3, 3 billion. Then think about the Lagos, um, Lagos or Nature traf uh, traffic going through the bridge. And that bridge is the gateway to the whole of Southeast and, and much of South South. So you can imagine how much traffic, even if you are charging 1,000 to passenger traffic and 2,000 to heavy haulage, you can imagine how many billions of dollars Naira you get in every year. So over a period of 20, 30 years, you can actually definitely recover the money. There's absolutely no doubt about that. But you well, have Prof, to I'm get sure... to that stage by building Prof... that infrastructure. And I'm then sure... think about the relief you get in all other, other modes of transport all the other modes of transport, like the highway and all of that. And, you know, you get the most relief on those. The maintenance costs will go down. The serviceability will go down. They also, the other ones, the radial roads going out of those. You know, you, you, you unbottle the, 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 unbundle the, the problems that we are facing in, um, in, in industrial development. Just well, by Prof, making you know, sure you have those infrastructure. You, I'm you not talking about the, the, the airport logistics. 
Prof, you mentioned, you know, that if cars yeah. are charged 1,000 and haulage 2,000, I'm sure you, you know that there'll be an outcry from the public if uh, you were to tow a car, a thousand naira. It will not really go down I'm, well. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm, oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm not sure I will agree with you. Look at the airline. Well, we are charging 1,000 naira on passenger traffic char uh, charges. 1,000 1, naira to add to your ticket to travel, okay, in the airports. We raised it to 2,000 naira. Nobody complained. And then what, what are you saying to this? If, you are, if I'm going to go to Lagos, from passing Niger Bridge, and then you simply add, and there's a bus carrying 10 people, you simply add 500 naira to my ticket because I'm going to go through a fast bridge. That will be another 5,000 naira from the revenue that you get. I mean, I'm, I can't believe this that you're asking me this question because it is so, so cheap when you reduce it to the people who are using the transport. Or are you telling me if, my, if I'm paying 250,000 naira per day for a haulage to go from Enugu to Lagos to go and collect my container, and then they come and spend their day just waiting to cross on each other to Lagos. You know, how much am I paying? It's costing me 250,000 naira. What's the difference in paying only 2,000 or 5,000 naira to pass through this new bridge? It's a massive savings. And then you don't forget, when you have delay, you also have security challenge. So it's a, and then if you have perishable products, they go before they get to their destination. So the, 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 the opportunity cost is, is not comparable. All right, Prof, uh, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us uh, on uh, looking at the debt stock my, against the capital expenditure my, as that's August, the ending of August. Thank you so much, Professor Kenife. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, so uh, today is the 20th of October, and uh, it's a day a lot of Nigerians, and in fact the world, will not forget in a hurry. Here in Nigeria uh, today, last year, there was the NSAS protests, and then it, was, it turned 